2016 it was a very difficult time and they now hope to do more for the community so welcome Jermaine hello Carol and Shazam. Shazam. Yes. <laughs> uh, we've actually had Jermaine as a guest on another radio station before, and uh, such a giving woman. Uh, join us on Facebook Live, facebook.com slash 1FM913. If you think she sounds familiar or she looks familiar, uh, yeah, join us as we chat with Jermaine. So tell us about the pop up pantry, how it all came about, Jermaine. Okay, it came about uh, during COVID, actually. So myself and Janice, a uh, good friend of mine from school, we were actually having beers. In a pub So we were actually talking about COVID right And how it's sort of You know we, we've got nothing much to be to do So what we did was We wanted to volunteer But when we actually called And wrote to some of these organisations Nobody actually replied to us Oh, oh. So Surprising what we, Yeah su- surpri- Maybe they were too busy as well right True. So overwhelmed maybe with responses um, So what we did was We We said Maybe let's, let's do our own stuff So we It's a lemonade stand idea uh, We were at Bidot South uh, we bought r- rice, tin food, noodles, and basically just handed out food oh, wow. to people who needed it. And we there were no questions asked. So that's how it started. Did, did you just put the word out on social media? If you need essentials, come to our stand. Uh, Is that right? So I just took a picture of Janice with the table. <laughs> You know, the makeshift one and <laughs> our little signage. And I posted it on uh, Facebook. Okay. And Mothership picked us up. Our friends picked us up and oh, wow. everybody in that same morning in August, just before National Day of 2020, um, basically came and dropped off food items to us. Brilliant. Wow. So it's one of those community kind of... Great. Yeah. So and it just started with that actually. And from then on, we thought, hey, why don't we just do you know a little bit more? Then we started with more pop-up pantries. And then after that, we evolved to doing other type of... Uh, community causes that we are basically close to our hearts in that yeah. sense Fantastic. I love that spirit you know do what you can with yeah. what you have kind yeah. of uh, attitude you don't have to wait for big organisations to come yeah. and help you out you and just do it the great thing was uh, what you kind of started it was kind of a rolling stone right? it kind of gathered momentum didn't it yeah it definitely gained momentum I mean obviously with the community um, outreach that we received and also for us to be able to give in that sense and receive actually from people that we were reaching out to it was quite amazing it was quite an amazing experience mm. that's why it's still alive today in that sense it's sort of like a movement I would say did, yeah. did you envisage that happening was that actually the plan or did you think oh we're just going to set the stand up and see and, and uh, obviously we'll we, I didn't expect it to be like that No, nobody expected it to be this way but we thought that maybe Perfect. you know with the outreach that I could get uh, we could try a little bit and then it sort of exploded I think <laughs> and in a good way Fantastic. What was was there a particular incident or experience that led you wanting to take action? Um, what triggered it? I think COVID came at a time when nobody expected what it was, how it came mm. like a tsunami in that sense, right? So everybody was like caught, I would say, wrong footed, yeah, and sort of like uh, I I think we all didn't know what to do as well, and everybody was in this together. It was a storm that everybody was trying right through actu- actually. And and I think uh, we really couldn't see what was what was far ahead in, in that sense, and nobody thought it was going to last like X number of years yeah. in that sense. So, so I think it really helped us as well um, in in a mental sense. Uh, I think mental health is so important during this time. Sure. Mm. And and then and I I think it's also allowed me to think uh, rethink of my 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 own personal journey. I guess you know in, in in terms of COVID or in terms of me and my relationship with. The rest of the community and the world, right? Wow. So how did that? <laughs> no. So how did that actually help you process some of those issues uh, or work through them? I think, I think we, for me, I think it was more f- sort of finding meaning in my life as well, and I think also finding things that I would enjoy. I mean, I'm an event planner, so obviously business was dead in that sense. Yeah. Everybody was just trying to pivot, and I, of, of course, I was trying to pivot as well. But I think more importantly, I was trying to pivot so that my mind would be, you know, mm. still like alive in a sense, or keep myself alive. Because I'm not someone who can actually stay in the house, you know, just sit there and. You, you know, want to get out and yeah, about. Yeah, I need to kind of get out and do stuff. So I think to be able to do this, have that avenue, to do this, and and kind of, in a good in in a, give back kind of way is is pretty awesome. I think. Circuit breaker must be tough for you then, because you, as you uh, say, you don't like being stuck cooped yeah, up at circuit home. Circuit breaker was tough, so I was always the one volunteering to kind of go outside and ah. do the grocery shopping. Okay. With everybody else, I, I'm sure we were all like full fledged in our masks and all that, right? I mean, yeah. talking about it now, it just feels like a 
lifetime ago. Whole other yeah, yeah. like yeah. Feels new like world, a very but surreal it's dream just, that yeah. happened. Yeah, it's like it's like it's just actually been. I mean, even last year we were still in our mask and all that, right? Yeah. So, so how I mean, like things have changed and all that, but it's good. It's good. Mm. We're chatting with Jermaine Yup, the co-founder of Pop-Up Pantry. Join us for the conversation on Facebook as well at facebook.com slash 1FM913. Back with more of Jermaine in a bit. Radio. Radio. Hello, good morning everyone. Morning. I Hello. just love your cheery gingerbread man Yeah, this sweater. is quite impressive. You know, that's actually, that would be me usually. I would come like in a festive little <laughs> uh, jumper or something like that. The ugly Christmas sweater, but nothing ugly uh, about that oh, one. Oh, oh. And nothing ugly about your soul as well, Jermaine. You've got such a beautiful soul. Just thinking about other people during a very difficult time. Very cool. I mean, a lot of us were just very happy, you know, during COVID to just stay in, do our own thing, bake the banana bread. But here's a woman who's thinking about the community and how other people must be not feeling so great, needing certain things, can't find work and need some essentials. What were some of the things that were quite, uh, you know, like people were in greatest need of during that time? Or I think people will I, I, I would say the greatest need is Not only the food that we were providing I, I guess to the people that were needing them mm. uh, The ones that were probably retrenched You know The less fortunate people I think it's just that 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 warm touch I think And yeah. just being able to talk to people Human in that sense. connection yeah. I mean we didn't really like Shake their hands in that sense But we were distanced from them I mean socially distanced um, But so there was interaction There was interaction It was just like little cards That we made for example To the hawkers just to thank them Because I think the hawkers Were really struggling During that time yeah. as well Business was bad Nobody was really In the offices In that sense Everyone was working from home So businesses were affected And we were also um, Buying like Meals for the delivery um, f- Riders um, Because I think It's also to support The hawkers in that sense To buy yeah. food from them And give back to the delivery So it's just little Little things like that I mean it's just a really Small gesture but I think it, it, it touches their heart mm. and it also touches our soul as well sure. because, you know, when you give, you also receive in that sense. I think it's that simple gesture that makes a difference. It's not something that we would think about, yeah. you know, that's not... The littlest big, things. Yeah. yeah. Listen, you know, uh, just very quickly, I you know, during the, the pandemic, I I felt for the uh, the um, our workers, you know, uh, they've come from overseas, they were stuck in their dorms, they couldn't, they couldn't do anything, they couldn't leave... Uh, and I kind of, uh, because of my cricket connections, I got a cricketer from Bangladesh, a, a, a famous one, a national one, to send a video to wish them all the best and Aww. stick to the through the tough times. And it was just kind of, it kind of went a little bit mini viral amongst their community. That's the th- only thing I could think of because I couldn't do anything from from home. And I thought, well, let's just get this message out. And uh, I got some messages from from workers who found kind of found me through social media to say, thank you, it meant so much just to hear because he's like a superstar. For them Wow um, But just little things like that I mean it was a simple thing I could I managed to mobilize very quickly And look The the, the, the tiniest gesture that we, that we may take for granted Every day In non-COVID times Correct. Means the world In these times of crisis mm-hmm. It's it, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing But How has your How has your pop-up pantry Kind of evolved Since those days mm, So basically I mean we, we Since that this is A little movement That we started We just wanted to get The ball rolling as well And we've got volunteers That have reached out to us So we thought We can do stuff With a lot more help And support yeah. in that sense So from the hawker series That we did with Perhaps like 12 uh, different hawkers Across the island We also oh. went about Doing um, Stuff for the migrant workers As well wow. Just last year actually We, we basically went to The centre uh, center in Ubi mm-hmm. um, And then we Did a Diwali party For them Oh lovely So we did We actually provided About 300 goodie bags Had a bit of A little bit of a party oh. With them And and played music um, We had a lot of little kids come and help as well And we had haircuts Free haircuts for the migrant workers We also had some cricket Because oh, nice. one of my f- mates actually basically bought some um, equipment yeah. and we could, They had a good space for us to play some right. cricket yeah. It was the first time I batted as well So ah. I mean I play, I play alright tennis I would say So I got. So the you've swing. got the swing I've got okay, the swing good. So but obviously there has to be some adjustment Oh lovely <laughs> Oh wow I love that And you're an event planner So Or you're in the events industry Yeah So you kind of know how that works So I've been in the event, uh, events industry For more than 20 years actually So It's sort of in my blood yeah. To be able to plant stuff like that mm. And to be creative as well So you got kids to come along as well To be part of the kids from outside Kids from to outside my, my, my friend's kids Oh lovely uh, Like 
whoever volunteers who have children might, that might want to support us. So we actually welcome all ages for our volunteers as well. I, I think this is really good because something I'm very uh, passionate about, which is one of the reasons why I, I helped out the migrant workers in whatever way I could, is I feel that they just don't get um, enough credit. I don't. I feel that there's, yeah. there's, they're often stigmatized, and I think it's really good that the kids got to see because this is the recreation center and a dorm. I'm, I'm guessing correct. Correct. Right. It's the recreation center actually. They kind of get to see the other side of it they may just see them working but they don't see how they live and that, that, that's really good that you did that guys let's just recap this conversation on air as well I think people need to know how they can get involved how they can be creative when it comes to giving back and helping our community okay one sec we're jumping back live on air join us there Saran Duran and A View to a Kill here on 1FM 91.3. Good times, greatest hits. Good morning to you. You're hanging out on the bright side with Carol and Shazad. Join in the studio with a very cheery lady, Jermaine Yup, who is the co-founder of the Pop-Up Pantry. And uh, it all began during COVID-19, right, Jermaine? You just started like a sort of lemonade stand providing essential items for the needy, people who needed rice, tin food, uh, could come by and grab stuff. You know, you were buying from the hawkers mm. to donate to the delivery drivers. And uh, more recently, last year you also helped out with the migrant worker community there are about 1 million migrant workers here in Singapore so that's definitely a group that needs our love and attention as well tell us about that that event that you um, organised for them the event we organised for them was a Diwali party at the recreation centre in Ubi Um, and basically what we did was just provided goodie bags to them uh, we had all these local um, Indian snacks that they could get, like sort of um, make them feel at home in that sense because Diwali is sort of like a big party sure, for them. of course. And we had free haircuts for them as well. Wow. And we played some cricket. Um, so it was actually a good good time for us as well, for the volunteers as well as the participants who... They got involved this, in yeah, all yeah. this. Brilliant. And with the haircuts, like, did you get like barbers or did you guys so do... How, how did that the, work? The barbers that I got basically was this network of... Uh, Volunteers who learn how to cut hair mm. for uh, for b- during the COVID nineteen basically they I think they went to the skills worker credit I think you can actually have causes like that right skills oh. future Sk- yeah. sorry skills future oh. credit so I also became barber I watch YouTube video <laughs> I think people were attempting to cut yeah, yeah, yeah. each other's hair in because you couldn't home, right? really go yeah there was one point about the 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 salons and the barber shops were closed right? yeah correct oh right okay yeah, yeah. also did you know mm-hmm. uh, Shazad used to be a national cricketer used to play cricket so if you need a coach or you need Someone, I'm sure you can tap on his skills. Okay. And yeah. during COVID, I shaved my head. So, <laughs> so I don't need a haircut, but I can help you with the cricket. And Thank the barbering you. as well, right? <laughs> and the, yeah, just shave it. Shave it, guys. I think Easy. you just need some steady hands in, a, in that sense. Mm. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you also got like a whole village to come and help you out. There were kids involved. And I think that's something that we also appreciate. You know, I, this is what I, I really love that you got kids to come as well and be part of this Diwali event last year. And they, they get to see how the workers live and play. Yeah, I think it's great to, to for the parents to let the kids get involved as well. I think it's also to start them in a volunteerism spirit from a young age. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. So on that note, how can people get involved with the Pop-Up Pantry? Um, we're actually on Instagram as well as Facebook. So you can search Pop-Up Pantry. Our logo is this red... Um, very bright uh, logo which you can spot us Um, the other thing is we actually have some um, activities that we've planned for this December as well okay tell us yeah Yeah, please Uh, we're coming back with uh, a party for the migrant workers great so some more free haircuts uh, in December this is happening uh, next Saturday okay at the same RC facility the recreation center in Ubi Uh, all the information is going to be on our Facebook as well as our um, Instagram page. And I believe December is also International Migrant Workers Day sometime in December if I'm not mistaken. Um, but just say, yeah, just say yes. I know that now yeah. but uh, I think it's great that I timed it perfectly exactly. in that no, sense. Of course you did, Jermaine. Right? Yeah, but I think it's also She's an events planner. She should know this. Yeah. I think it's also because it's, this, it's Christmas is coming up and yeah. it's the great time and it's also winding down, right? Everyone's yeah. kind of winding down their work year. So I think it's great for us to give back as well. Um, it's going to be 18th December. International Migrant Workers So you planned ahead. Very yeah. good. Very planned good, ahead Jimmy. so that people know that on the 18th, yeah. they should actually be thanking them. Yeah. They, they, in person, maybe they see them on the on the street. Hey good man, job, Jermaine. December is tomorrow. It should be a month of thanking them and celebrating True. them as well for True. all the hard work that they do. Uh, but Jermaine, so it's such a beautiful thing that you are just wanting to go there, go into the community, show love, spread love during this time where it can get very focused on the wrong things, like the parties and the eating and the presents and all that. So it's good that you're focused focusing us on what truly matters during this time. It's a season of love. 
I think I'm also guilty of the parties as well. But I think it's also um, nice if you can just put aside some time, just yeah. a small, like even it's a short weekend, like two hours of your time. I think it's nice. Nothing if, wrong if, with the parties. Don't get me wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. it's it's Could about do both. yeah yes to all. You know, exactly. it's also about setting up time, like you said, setting aside that time to give back. And I think that makes all the difference, especially so when, you know, you were talking about mental health issues earlier on, when it's something that you've also, you know, a lot of people are struggling this year. We still don't know how people are trying to cope with, you know, coming back from COVID, their families. There's more awareness on that, finding that balance now. And perhaps giving back is one way of finding that balance. And also just reaching out to anyone. I think even your family, your friends, whoever. Checking in, Just checking in. I think it's just a nice gesture. Mm. Can I ask beyond December Are there any other things That we should look out for Pop-up pantry what do you uh, guys So December th- The Migrant Workers uh, yeah. uh, Event is one of them We're also going to be Visiting the Elderly In the neighbourhood In Dakota Crescent oh, So lovely. just distributing Some goodie bags um, And just going to visit again Revisit the The old folks That we've actually um, Reached out to Oh um, lovely So we'll do that um, I think it's next week On a uh, Busy, busy Saturday. week so coming up. Everything is happening in, in December. <laughs> and then we'll also go back to about two hawker centres in the east. We, we kind of like the east a lot. Mm. A lot of us... Uh, from east this side is the best side. I think east we're all east east here, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, we're going to pick two of our favourite uh, hawker centres and go back there and just... Is that, is that one across the Coda Crescent in particular? Uh, that we like? like that one very much. Yes. So we don't <laughs> so, know yet. So do we. So do we. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Where is this place? I need to find out. You're giving each other the you don't eye, know. the wink, wink. What She's is this? She's not really an East Ider that way, huh? She I'm new, like, I'm new <sighs> to the East. Give chance, people. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. you know your Bedok South. I was it's life. Ch- it's a life changing hook. Uh, how did Guys, what is happening in Dakota? Please tell me. Old Airport Road. Oh right. Okay. Anyway. What? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Jermaine, how can people reach out to you? What exactly is your Instagram handle again? Pop up pantry. Okay. All right, just pop up pantry, just like that. No SG or anything, huh? Okay, <laughs> and your Christ- your migrant Christmas party is this Saturday, next Saturday. Next Saturday. Which day the- is that? On the 8th On the 8th of December From 3 to 6pm 3 to 6 So we're looking for volunteers uh, There's a link actually In the bio mm-hmm. uh, So basically click on the link And you can sign up uh, Whether you can make it for the dates Or in any other way uh, Donations to the goodie bags Anybody Of all ages We welcome everybody fantastic. Okay that's fantastic uh, What kind of things Do people want to donate? Um, I think In the goodie bags It would be nice to have um, Things that Food items, I think And I think it's during Christmas as well So maybe, I don't know Some Chocolate Chocolates uh, Sweet stuff mm-hmm. Like uh, I think one, a, a friend of mine Is going to bake some brownies as well Okay So we're going to have a few things That's a lot of brownies to make <laughs> What about things like phone chargers And you know Let's uh, say socks Okay, or? we're going to prepare about 200 uh, goodie bags So for phone chargers I'm not sh- confident that we can get 200 phone chargers That's a lot But who knows Maybe everyone's going to be touched by what we've shared today Battery pack Yeah, yeah And then Yep, and then we can put them in if we have enough of them. Get in touch with Jermaine yes. if uh, there's something you'd like to put together. It doesn't even have to be 200 of them, right? It can Correct. be a few. So yeah. I think it's also whoever wants to donate anything that they think might be suitable for them as well. Mm. So sure. we, it could be like um, things that we could fit in a goodie bag. Like I would say think. towels maybe even. Towels would be good as well, I yeah. think. Mm. Okay, all in good condition. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah I think... The, I mean the brand new items Would be nice Yes so, yeah. Brand new We like that Okay Jermaine Thank you so much For joining us here Thanks, today Jermaine. On Great the stuff. bright side You keep shining your light And of course Merry Christmas to you as Merry well Merry Christmas to Merry everyone Christmas. And thanks for having me here today Our pleasure The bright On 1FM 91.3 was the season of Christmas and all through the day, 1FM was building a big giveaway to fill all your stockings and tummies at least. With Good time, greatest hit.